Okay, we have a aromas circuit here, and uh, it's running um, with only a six volt battery pack. Um, here's the CFL lighting up. I've got this crude scarp spark gap, which has to um, have the gap very very close because we're we're running at uh, kind of a lower voltage uh, with a six volt pack. And uh, I got the idea of hooking up, in series with the CFL, a step-down transformer running over to a bridge rectifier with a capacitor serving as a line filter and then on over to a NICAD battery with, with the hope that it would charge this battery. And um, Without the spark gap, I was seeing a, a very small current flow, and the battery would come up in voltage slowly, and it seems like it would take quite a while. With the spark gap running, the multimeter is showing the voltage jump around quite a bit. Um, it's not as dramatic. It was going up in the 9 volts. Uh, I think my spark gap is getting... Uh, a little weak here. Let me uh, try to find the resonant frequency a little bit better. I probably also need need to widen the gap. Okay, I uh, messed around. It's it's really uh, difficult to get this gap um, exactly where I want it, but. Um, because you know running this lower voltage like this but uh, here we show the battery being charged the battery under charge again and the voltage jumps around quite a bit if I switch this whole machine off switch this off then this is the voltage on the battery And the battery is charging, so that's very cool. So, um, basically, the interesting thing here is the notion of adding a step-down transformer. I think this is a 10 to 1 ratio, so um, whatever the voltage coming in is, uh, possibly 250 volts, upwards to 500 volts, step down by 10. Um, and then once you put this capacitor on here, you end up with around 10 volts DC very low current however but with the spark gap going the current increases tiny little spark gap voltage jumping around a little bit not as dramatic resonance a little bit. There we go. This is probably the biggest gap I can make. And look at that voltage over here. So the D DC voltage went shooting way up, coming out of this step down with a line filter and a bridge rectifier. So you know everything I have here is connected very fra uh, you know with clip leads and uh, it's very fragile. If it was more uh, stable as a circuit then I believe this could charge a 9-volt battery from a 6-volt source. Okay, another discovery here. So, um, dialing around this uh, pot to find the resonant frequency, I was uh, using, uh, I was just basically looking for the brightest possible light here. Um, but then it occurred to me, what I should be measuring 
is the current flowing into this battery under charge. Uh, I said it was a NICAD, but it's not, I'm sorry, it's a, actually a um, nickel metal hydroxide uh, battery. Um, let's see if I can zoom in on it. Whoa. Sorry, I'm struggling with the camera here. Um, so, uh, what I'm going to do now is measure the current coming into the battery. And what I'm finding is that the resonant frequency for this step down transformer might actually be different than the CFL. So, as I dial around on the pot, um, I can look for the uh, most amount of current flowing into the battery. And so th this is pretty good. I was getting a, I was getting upwards to 0.4 uh, 0.4 uh, milliamps. Sometimes as high as 0.5 milliamps. So, uh, Okay, here's, uh, I was able to sort of, by luck, find a spot where it's um, one and a half to almost two milliamps coming into the battery. Um, and this is a, a battery that has a charge of about 8.5 volts. Um, so in terms of watts, that's about 17 milliwatts. Um, I think uh, if if I had a larger um, battery here and larger sparks going across here, I'm sure we could increase the current quite a bit to that battery. But I was just curious if we if I you know if I could sort of get away with um, charging a nine volt battery with a six volt battery. Um, I'll screw around with this some more.